Welcome back to our conference program, where we will now move ahead with our panel discussion on safety in design and construction of pipelines with the second co-chair of our advisory committee, Dirk Strack as session chair. Dirk started his career with ILF consulting engineers before he gained his first experience as a pipeline operator with Nordwest Ölleitung NWO. He afterwards joined the Transalpine pipeline TAL, one of the largest European oil pipelines where he was responsible as technical director and for TAL Austria as managing director. Since beginning of 2020, he is working as an international consultant within the energy industry with focus on integrity, increase of efficiency, as well as implementation of best in class practices. Dirk is also senior advisor uh, to the ITIP Institute. I know that safety has always played a very important role during uh, your professional career, Dirk, and um, I'm very happy indeed that you will be the session chair for this interesting panel. Please, Dirk, the floor is yours. Yeah. <clears throat> Dennis, many thanks for your warm words and your kind introduction. As every year, I'm happy to be part of the PTC. Even I would prefer to have a face-to-face -face conference together with all of you in Berlin. And I'm sure that you, ladies and gentlemen, are feeling the same. So a very warm welcome from my side after the lunch break. And um, I'm happy to have you in our common panel discussion about safety in design and construction of pipelines. Before we are talking about safety, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Marin and Dennis and the whole ITEP team to organize this fantastic Congress. Unbelievable, the number of participants, more than 740 from 62 nations around the world. And you and your team, Dennis, were able to collect and convince them for participation. Additionally, a big thanks to our sponsors, to these important players in our industry. Without your commitment and reliable support, such an event would not be possible. During the last years, we had been taught that a consistent safety culture, proven standards, comprehensive training, and lesson learned behavior are essential to reach the goal of zero incidents. Today, let us be informed that other principles to ensure safety and safe pipeline operation are also important and must be seamlessly interlinked the design and the construction phase. We are starting this important panel discussion with Bruno Pomare. He is the Business Development Director of Speakerbug in France and additionally the Director of Board of Imploca. Bruno was nominated to Business Development Director at Speakerbug in March 2019 and has been with the company for more than 28 years. After graduating with a Master of Science in Civil Engineering, he held several construction and project management positions on EPC pipeline projects, for example, in Nigeria, Australia, Italy, Reunion Island and Yemen. He had led the technical department, supervising the tender department as well as managing the equipment and purchasing aspects of the company. Bruno is involved in the IPLOGA as being part of the board as director for the Europe Mediterranean region. He presented entries for the Ipluka Health and Safety Award, sponsored by Chevron, that were distinguished by runner-up in 2018 as well as in 2014. In his presentation, he will focus on the view of Ipluka to safety and how they are helping, as well as influencing their members in this respect. From the beginning of a project to a successful finalization with zero incidents. The second speaker I will present, Dr. Thomas Jung, who is the Director of Project Division with Max Streicher, Germany. Thomas holds a doctorate in Mechanical Engineering and is responsible for the Project Division within the Streicher Group, which is providing engineering services and tailor-made products for the business sectors, pipeline and plants, mechanical engineering, civil and structural engineering, raw and construction material. 
Around 3,700 employees at more than 30 locations enabled Streicher to offer all kinds of services for complex turnkey projects, from engineering to procurement, from construction to commissioning. And before joining Streicher, Thomas was held various management positions within the Aeon Group. He will talk in detail about safety does not start at site, but already in the early planning and design phase of a project. It is a question of mindset. Fundamental improvements can be reached without spending exorbitant amounts of money. The final presentation will be given by Dr. Ashok Vimalanandan, Center of Competence for Corrosion Protection by Open Grid Europe in Germany. Ashok received his doctorate for his scientific work focusing on electrochemistry and corrosion from the Max Planck Institute for Iron Research. After gaining experience as a project leader within the research and development department in the pipe seal sector, he joined Open Grid Europe in 2017. During this time, he was involved in the corrosion protection assessment and prediction of pickable and non-pickable pipelines, as well as coatings and operational support and questions regarding cathodic corrosion protection. Currently, he is leading a team of experts dealing with the integrity assessment and coatings within the Center of Competence for Corrosion Protection. His presentation will lead us to an application developed by Open Grid Europe for safeguarding pipelines against external damages, a continuous and comprehensive monitoring technology which ensures detection exactly at the time of incidents. Ladies and gentlemen, please use the chat boxes displayed on the right for your questions during the presentations. My colleagues will catch and cluster them so that we will answer them during the Q&A block afterwards the three presentations. So Bruno, let's start. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to this uh, panel uh, discussion regarding uh, safety in design and the construction of, uh, of pipelines. Uh, my name is uh, Bruno Pomare. Uh, I am the business development director of uh, Spicapag from France, Spicapag being a French pipeline contractor. And as well, I am uh, one of the directors of the board of IPLOCA. Uh, within the European uh, Mediterranean region. So, just a brief uh, word on our uh, company, Spicapag. So, we are, uh, an, a, let's say, an old uh, company. You know, we our activity uh, starts uh, almost 100 years ago when we were part of a SPI group. And uh, in 77, uh, the pipeline department of SPI and uh, the company CAPAG uh, were merged in order to form uh, SPI CAPAG. And uh, uh, since uh, this uh, close to 100 years, we have done uh, 60,000 of kilometers of pipelines, uh, almost 2,000 trenches crossings. And uh, our goal is the safe delivery of the most challenging uh, pipelines uh, in the world. So we as I said previously, we were before part of a SPI group, and since uh, 2007, we are part of Vinci. Uh, so Vinci is a very large uh, uh, civil uh, construction and concession uh, group. And uh, within Vinci, uh, ourselves, we are part of a division which is called uh, Vinci Construction. And you have uh, the key figures uh, of 2019 uh, on the screen. Uh, so as I said previously, you know, we, we we do perform in very challenging uh, project on the environment. Uh, so we, we we can work in any type of uh, environment. Uh, you can see on those slides, you know, in cold climate, in a very hot desert, in very humid uh, tropical forest. Uh, we can uh, work in high altitude, uh, uh, you know, high pressure pipeline. Uh, so you have a, a, a brief summary of, uh, you know, the kind of challenges we can uh, we can tackle. We, as I said, we are based in uh, in France. We have uh, 
some subsidiaries uh, four main subsidiaries uh, uh, one being HDI, who is specialized in uh, horizontal directional uh, drilling, so based in France as well. We have another uh, subsidiary based in Toulouse in France, who works uh, most, mostly in the south and the north of France as well, in France. We have another subsidiary called Intech, based in uh, Brazil, and another subsidiary called Speak Up Ag Australia, who is based out of Brisbane. So on the, we have some uh, trade offices as well uh, in Canada and in uh, Colombia. Regarding safety, because this is uh, one of the topic, uh, um, the topic of uh, our presentation today. Uh, so within Spikapa, we have uh, we have a safety program uh, which I can summarize in uh, in a few words. So we 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 engage on uh, on our uh, at corporate level and on our project. We engage everybody. Uh, we we have a program called uh, engaging everybody that we we develop and uh, we uh, we promote on all of our uh, project uh, in order to 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 have a safe delivery uh, of 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 a project uh, and this is mainly based on the leadership management we have a, a, a certain number of tools and uh, procedures uh, uh, that uh, you will find uh, as well uh, within the program that we are developing within Iploca. so Iploca, so now we will uh, talk a little bit uh, in more detail regarding the, the IPLOCA itself, the, the HSC and CSR committee actions and uh, initiatives that are uh, been done lately and that are uh, going on that uh, will give you uh, some uh, glimpse of uh, what's happening within the, the pipeline uh, construction industry uh, as a whole. So first, what is IPLOCA? Uh, I just put this uh, screen uh, because we we just recently uh, uh, re let's say reformat or rebuilt our uh, our website, the IPLOCA website. So there is a brand new a brand new website uh, which uh, I uh, I suggest you, you you go and have a look uh, where you will find uh, all the information that I'm going to to give you in the in the next uh, the next uh, slides. So IPLOCA, it's an association. Uh, it was formed uh, uh, back in 1966 as a, as a division of the of a PLCA, the Pipeline Contractors Association of, uh, of the United States. Uh, the headquarters are in Geneva, in, uh, in Switzerland. And the association has uh, several types of membership that I have you know, summarized in uh, in the main three uh, type of membership. The first membership uh, is the regular members, so mostly the, you know, the contractors or companies which are involved in the execution of, of pipeline, whether onshore or, or offshore. You have uh, 82, as of today, 82 regular members. And uh, the world has been divided in several uh, regions. And as mentioned earlier on, I am one of the directors of the Europe Mediterranean region. We have as well the associate members uh, membership, which are mostly the company that provide the services, equipment, material, tools, etc. with uh, some of, uh, of the company which are uh, associate members. And uh, recently, a few years ago, we introduced a new membership uh, uh, section, which is the corresponding members. So corresponding members being the client and, uh, and operators and owners of, uh, of assets. And you have as well some of the main uh, main uh, operators. So the mission uh, of Iploca is uh, is to provide uh, value to to its members uh, through uh, a forum for retaining and sharing knowledge uh, globally, facilitating business opportunities, and promoting the highest standards in safety, innovation, quality, business ethics, sustainability for the pipeline construction industry. So, in order to, to promote and to manage uh, the mission and uh, its vision, there is a leadership, so there is a board of directors, uh, which is close to yeah, it's 25, in fact, 25 uh, members, uh, directors, which are uh, elected uh, on an annual, uh, annual basis. As of today, you have... Uh, the leadership, the executive committee, headed by uh, the president uh, Leon Richards from uh, McConnell Lowell. 
and uh, the board uh, have a meeting every every trimester in order to review the different uh, uh, actions of the different committees that I will describe later on, and uh, as well preparing the annual convention. So the, the different committees under the leadership uh, of the board, so there is the HEC and CSR committee, the innovation committee, the membership committee, and as well there are some projects that are going on, the scholarship, uh, I suggest that you go on to the, the website, you can see for the members, the, the scholarship program that is proposed, and as well the convention and board meeting locations committee. All this with the, under the, the control and management as well of the PLOCA secretariat, who uh, is aided by our secretary, uh, Juan uh, Arswaga. So regarding uh, health and safety uh, within uh, IPLOCA, uh, we have to abide uh, by our health and safety philosophy. So we, we are committed to the health and safety of our people. Uh, we do believe that all incidents and accidents are avoidable. Uh, we believe that leadership is a key on, for successful health and safety. And uh, eventually everybody is, is responsible for health and safety. Uh, and all this can be summarized well, that we need to engage, engage uh, everybody. So there is a committee leadership. So those are the director of the board who are within the committee uh, leadership at, uh, you know, uh, at each uh, board uh, of directors uh, report uh, on the different action of the HEC CSR committee. The HEC CSR committee is the following. So we have several, uh, several members from uh, different uh, companies uh, being either regular or associate members and corresponding members as well. Uh, the HSC CSR committee uh, meet every six months, and uh, now due to the COVID, we have uh, we have managed to have some more meeting uh, by Zoom or, or Teams. So some of the uh, actions of the health and safety uh, committee. First of all, we have our health safety and environmental statistics annual report. So we do we do uh, we do request to our members to send, you know, on the establish uh, form and definition, etc. All the different uh, KPIs and statistics uh, related to safety and environment. And all these uh, data are uh, eventually combined into a, a single report, which is. Uh, uh, available on the on the IPLOCA website. Uh, it does help to see the trend in our industry on how we are performing in terms of safety and environment. And as well, it gives a, a, a benchmark, you know, it's a, it's a good tool as well to compare to what uh, what the industry is doing uh, is doing as a whole. After within the committee, we have all well, we have as well, sorry, the, the awards. So we have three types of awards. We have the health and safety, the environment, and the CSR uh, award. Uh, this gives value to our members. So we, we, we reward, you know, those members who are leading by example. So it's important for, for our uh, members to share, you know, the, the, the best, uh, the best in class, in fact. Uh, and after we can share within all the members the different uh, the different initiatives, and it does make sense as well to make sure that uh, what good action has been done on a particular project can be shared on the on other project. Uh, it's easy for members to participate, and we do promote uh, to 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 participate in these in those uh, in those awards. And uh, there is a ceremony every year during the annual convention where the awards are uh, distributed. So the, regarding another action is the health and safety workshop uh, that we do on an annual uh, annual basis. Uh, we try to find a subject uh, every year dedicated to a particular subject. And the last one we the last one we did uh, was on the safety leadership. So we we we, we had uh, the help of uh, Dupont. Uh, in order to to to, to manage uh, this uh, this workshop, uh, uh, which on which we in, invited you know managers, executives, etc., and uh, really this workshop was uh, was based to reinforce the safety culture and uh, and improve our safety uh, safety uh, performance. 
it was uh, well uh, well attended and there was a good feedback uh, from the participants because uh, yeah, safety starts starts as well with uh, with leadership. Regarding the HSC and uh, learning program, we have uh, on the website some uh, tools related to the to the training of uh, of workers. So this has been done through the the, the pipeline uh, contractors association of Canada. So you can find all these tools uh, on the on the website or where you can have some training program dedicated on all the pipeline uh, activities. So this is uh, can and it can be uploaded on, on intranets. Another initiative is a novel construction. So novel construction is, in a, is an initiative that started uh, back in 2004, which main uh, main uh, objective has been to produce uh, a book which is called Road to Success. But uh, at first was a book, and now it is uh, it is an, uh, an application on uh, on iPad, uh, where we have developed. Uh, kind of uh, best in practice uh, guidelines uh, on the, how to execute uh, a pipeline project and as such all the health and safety uh, uh, parameters were introduced into the, the, the writing of the of the book and uh, so there is uh, within a novel construction there is a hsc and csr uh, uh, working group that uh, uh, is there to coach and uh, challenge and uh, and help the other working groups produce the, the different uh, materials. Regarding some current and latest uh, initiatives of the uh, HSC and CSR committee, we have uh, we produce some life and saving rules. You know, we produce 16 of them that are same. Uh, you know, available on the IPLOCA website. We developed as well. Uh, a standard for uh, operator uh, competency under the heading of VAV equipment operator logbook in order to, to, to define the safe minimum safety requirements for for the operate operating of heavy heavy machinery. Uh, ongoing we are working on the uh, so this is uh, related more to environment and CSR on the CO2 calculation tool within the, the committee and as well because this is uh, still a, a topic that is under uh, under scrutiny is uh, the driving. Uh, we still do realize that driving is still uh, a subject of, uh, of hazard within the pipeline project uh, because we do we do, uh, do travel and uh, drive a lot of pipeline project mostly on long distance or some even not long but with difficult accesses. And uh, so we, 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 we decided to, to, to emphasize what can be uh, done uh, better or different uh, on driving on our project. And this is what we are working, uh, working now. After we have the, the shared experience platform. So it has been, the format has just been changed because we have a, a new website. So it's a database, huh? it's a database where Every uh, every member produces, uh, you know, lessons learned, uh, safety alert, etc., uh, etc., et uh, know-how, and uh, on safety and environment as well. So it is uh, it is uh, indexed through different uh, chapters, and uh, so there is a searching tool, and uh, there are already up to three hundred uh, documents uh, uploaded. Uh, it is the same thing; it is available to anyone. Uh, if you are an IPOCA member, you can get uh, you can get direct uh, notifications, and uh, you know it's important to share uh, to share information regarding safety. So we, we we those material can be used on your own project. You know when you do your your uh, daily uh, daily safety flash or your daily uh, uh, pre-start meeting or toolbox talk meeting, you can use this material. Saying, but look at this, it has been uh, it has it has happened on a another project but the conditions are similar so we should uh, we should uh, we should be alert so this is a, a very a very interesting uh, very interesting working tool so first 
thanks for your attention. Uh, and uh, so this gives you, uh, you know, the trend of what's happening within the, the pipeline, uh, pipeline industry in terms of, of safety. Uh, if I would like to summarize in a, in a few words, uh, leadership is very important. Uh, management of leadership, uh, it has to be as well top down and down to top with uh, you know feedback from the from the crews, uh, where we have to ma make sure we engage uh, engage everybody, and as well communication. Communication is very important within safety, and the way we communicate. Uh, I always remember. I, I remember one of the coaching session I had uh, in the past. Uh, when we talk about uh, PPE, it's important the way uh, you talk about PPE because it's it's easy to to say to somebody uh, wear your PPE, you know, as a direct order. But uh, it's better to say uh, protect yourself in terms of uh, you 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 make some empathy with the, with the people. So communication is key as well. So thanks again for your for your attention. So, uh, thank you for the nice introduction. It's a quite unusual format, at least for me, to give a presentation in a way like this. But I think in this time, it's the best way we can do. And I would like to thank the organizers for the excellent preparation and the work to make this conference happen. As you all, all well know, there are three pillars uh, which are fundamental to ensure safety. First, this is the preparation of work and your processes, meaning you have a proper plan to, uh, to work prior you start and you should be uh, have the right processes like an integrated management system or safety, safety cultural letter in place to enable a safe work. Second, this is the mindset and behavior of the people. Safety has to be an integral, uh, integral part of the company DNA and this could be reached by constant training to sharpen the awareness for dangerous situation and foster a safe environment to work on. And thirdly, the usage of the right equipment, equipment which is improving your safety, where small ideas can have a big impact and the development of equipment is driven by the safety aspect right from scratch. Although all three pillars are equally important and I do not want to rank them, I will focus today on the last point, the usage of the right equipment in, in the upcoming minutes. Falling from a ladder or a machine are the most common causes of accidents in pipeline construction. These accidents often lead to serious injuries, which additional to the individual pain and damage can cause a massive loss of work days. This has been also true for our company and we wanted to bring these figures down. After internal analysis and interviews with site managers and other site personnel, we discovered that a large part of falling accidents at Streicher's pipeline construction happening during the welding, coating, and insulation works on big pipes, which were often performed either by utilizing ladders or related to falling and slipping or tripping accidents from side booms. I'd like to demonstrate on two little examples to show that simple developments can have a great impact. First shown on the left side, uh, we developed a solution where a safe and easy to handle connection between ladder and pipeline could be established. This was done by a combination of modified lashing strap and a safety la lanyard. Thanks to the flexible design, it's now possible to use a normal ladder, even with the large height differences between pipeline and surface. By securing the ladder uh, with a pipeline, this system is even independent from surface character. Due to its easy handling, the system was well received by the workers and uh, on site, and our statistics show that accidents caused by overturning, slipping or sinking uh, in of the ladder went down significantly. Secondly, shown on the right side, we tried to increase safety of our side booms. 
Uh, after our internal al analysis, it became clear that a major part of all accidents could be lead back to two types of older generation side booms. And only 25% of our side booms were declared as safe in terms of getting on or off. One of the key findings of the incident, in in incident investigation team was that the already available mobile climbing aids, e.g. ladders, were used only partially or not often or often not at all. Getting on or off the side booms, as well as service works, were usually performed by climbing over the chain drive, uh, which is obviously not acceptable. So we had to question ourselves either to procure new working devices with alternative climbing aids, or we had to modify our own machineries to ensure a safe getting on or off in future. Well, I think the answer is very obvious, as we did not want to scrap our equipment, which is reliable in other aspects. Um, therefore, we established an internal target group with internal and external experts, e.g. from TÜV, to develop a technical solution to fulfill all the technical and legal requirements and develop the climbing aid which serve as safe access to the engine area. In contrast to mobile climbing aids, which were hardly used, there is no almost no other option for the operator to use this fixed insulation for his safe getting on or off. The success was shown easily by our statistics. We discovered a massive impact then because since we implemented this climbing aid, the getting on or off accidents could be completely eliminated during the activities with side pumps. Against the background of the steadily growing requirements in construction projects with regards to safety, environmental protection and efficiency, we repeat, re repeatedly recognize that the solutions, approaches and equipment that are common and available on the market do not met our requirements. Therefore, we had to think a little bit further to constantly improve our equipment by the experience and feedback directly from site. And as we wanted to implement the safety aspect as an integral part of the design right from scratch. And as Stryker is in the very comfortable position that we are not only constructing pipelines, we also have our own machine engineering and building division available uh, where we can work together and develop our own equipment. Therefore, we constantly use many years of our practical experience within our group to optimize all processes and the equipment to be used. By in-house developments. Summarized by the motto, by practitioners for practice, coupled with a critical look at the long-term economic aspects, it characterizing the structuring of the processes as well as the development and fabrication of our future oriented and sustainable solutions through our in-house mechanical engineering. Whereas each does significantly improve the aforementioned key topics of safety, environmental protection, and efficiency compared to conventionally available technology. This led, this thinking led to our fully electrical driven remote controlled pay welder, which you can show, uh, which you can see on, on the slide. What makes this construction unique is that the gener generator, which is normally needed to deliver power for the welding, could be also used as engine to actuate the caterpillar drive. So there is no second engine needed. This results into a very agile and slim construction, the reduction of oil, fuel and noise, and uh, which is also quite unique. This uh, pay welder is remote control. So there is no driver cabin needed. This leads to a more compact design and higher agility. And also from the safety aspect, the driver of uh, the pay welder is able to control the pay welder from a position with an optimal site. Another highlight, which has uh, been just recently launched, 
is a 100% electrically driven horizontal drilling rig. This 80 ton drilling rig was developed by a team of specialists in cooperation with experienced drillers and offers a full featured and user-friendly mobile design incorporating powerful thrust and spindle drive and integrated mud pump and drill pipe handling system combined with the low emission electric drive technologies. Due to the full electrification, it was possible to reduce noise emission to a minimum. Moreover, many automatic features make the operation of the device easier and guarantee the highest degree of safety. The abandonment of hydraulic oil decreases the risk of contamination significantly. Therefore, the new horizontal drilling rig is especially well suited to sensitive ecological and urban areas. After a successful test run, this drilling rig is already on duty at a trenchless power cable laying project in Emsland in Germany. So to summarize, to work safe is a continuous task. There is a constant innovation needed to cope with the steadily growing requirements with regard to safety and environmental protection. Fundamental improvements can be reached without spending exorbitant amounts of money. And the direct link between practical experience and engineering is important. It's an important way to improve safety targets. This in mind, we keep committed to the target of zero incidents. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for the very kind introduction, ladies and gentlemen. Dear colleagues, it's a pleasure for me to be here and uh, to participate at this panel discussion. Uh, my name is Ashok Vimalanandan. I'm recently the head of inspection and assessment within the Center of Competence at uh, OGE. And it's also a pleasure for me to introduce to you um, our product Pipemon Plus and how it contributes to the safety of pipelines during construction. Um, let, me, let me start straight away. I, I think it is for us as a gas transmission operator, it is uh, safety is an undisputable issue. So we have the history and the experience um, to, to develop processes and technologies to um, keep on the safety level. On the one hand, as I said, the processes like, like, like coating, introducing coating inspector, and on the other hand, of course, um, the technologies. And here I just show you some of the technologies we have. Um, uh, the, uh, the gas detection by charm or gas cam. Um, I would like to focus today on our product Pipemon Plus and uh, the, the excavator damages and how we can detect it online and real time um, on screen. Of course, you might ask, okay, excavator damages during during construction, how is that possible? So I, I would like to imagine, I invite you to imagine that if you build a pipeline alongside a pipeline, for example, uh, to, to, to build a loop pipeline, uh, it's, it's inevitable that you have approaching points to the existing pipeline. Um, for example, you can see here that um, uh, this is one uh, close approach. Another thing is that you have a close approach to a crossing pipeline, and uh, which is not automatically yours. And you have also the situation where you have a bundle of pipelines lying very close to the to the to the pipeline you want to build. Um, of course, now you can also say. Good, you have anyway GPS coordinates of this uh, existing pipelines, but um, let me say like our experience tells that uh, the, you cannot always trust on this GPS coordinates as um, the, the, the pipelines which are already built are either one or two meters away from that GPS coordinates. So from our experience, um, 
uh, it is it is a higher risk if you build a pipeline here and if it is hit by uh, excavator. Of course, we are not talking about um, just damaging the coatings. Uh, we also talk about just uh, damaging uh, the the pipelines you build, uh, which are lying there. Um, well, we we saw this problem and we faced this problem. So we have developed this this Pipemon Plus as a, uh, as a um, as a tool to to monitor this issue. And how does this product work? Well, in in Germany, the the high pressure gas transmission pipelines are anyway equipped with a cathodic protection system. So this is something that you always have on 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 your pipelines. We want to use this system to uh, to make an add-on to re monitor the the excavator damages. Um, in briefly, if you have a cathodic protection system on your pipeline, you can measure at a certain test post the current flow through the pipeline. If if and nothing happens and if the situation is as always day to day, then um, you have a very stable current flow. But once you have an excavator hitting that pipeline, removing the coating, and if it touches the pipeline, so there's an immediate metallic contact to that one. It is like that you have a huge coating fold in, uh, on, on the pipeline. This incidence will immediately cause a redistribution of the current flow. And if you have a sensor equipped uh, or add, uh, I mean, uh, in 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 the test post, you can monitor this current flow. Mostly, it is a very small current, so you need a technology which can register this. Um, it works like, uh, in, uh, like like depicted in this following scheme. You have uh, a sensor installed in this test post, which is continuously measuring the current and the potential of the cathodic protection system mostly 10 times in a in a second so this data is scanned and measured uh, by a certain software and transferred to a to a patented algorithm system like artificial intelligence which can learn on the one hand and also analyze if this uh, signal changes are um, crucial or not, and if this is uh, if this is a very crucial change in the in the signal, then the system will automatically send an alert to the to the operating personnel, which can handle this issue. By, for example, you can also send a drone to check to check the location for that one. Um, of course, this system can be temporarily installed to uh, safeguard the pipelines so the, the, the existing pipeline up, uh, around your constructed pipelines but this can be also permanently installed uh, if, if for your newly built pipelines um, so it's just switching the sensor from the existing pipelines to the new one and this gives you also an, uh, another advantage that you can uh, monitor the, the the crucial areas um, uh, in a in a in a time resolved manner. Further advantage is, of course, because you are using this uh, um, an existing system, um, especially here the, the the cathodic protection system on the pipeline. Uh, it is it is of course uh, very economical. It is also very precise because uh, the artificial intelligence will um, reduce the false alarms. Um, um, in a sh very short run and on the long run. And it is also very efficient to use it alongside with your cathodic protection system because you also gather automatically the data which are uh, like potential or current. And um, this is not just a, just a concept we have. It is um, also uh, um, investigated on a, on a field test uh, in a very big DVGW project, CP online detection, and uh, with, a, with a group of um, pipeline operators in, in Germany. 
and we also have a very good experience uh, with the system uh, during construction uh, of the of our own pipelines the OGE, OGE pipelines or also with the joint venture pipelines. The recent example is we, we, we use the system during the construction of the Zeeling pipeline. And uh, we also have very good experience with that system or very good feedback, I have to say, with the operators of fuel pipelines or network operators in Switzerland. Um, as we, I mean, I'm not the guy who, is, who invented this, but um, uh, we have in our department, uh, the the know-how to support you in in the technical questions and of course if you are very much interested in the system you can also contact the service management and um, in any ways we would uh, support you to, um, uh, to the best manner we can and we would do it very happily and um, i'm also now coming to the end of my of my presentation so i introduce you to our system um, which can which can enable you to safeguard your pipelines during construction, and I showed you also why it is important to have such systems or similar to systems uh, running during construction of a pipeline. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. I'm very much looking forward for the discussion and of course for your questions. Thank you. So, gentlemen, glad to see all my speakers here on board, and we can start now with the questions summarized already in the chat. But Bruno, let's start. Um, we have seen the new Iploga homepage with a lot of different uh, diagrams um, and interesting figures. Is the access to the platform possible only for members of Iploga, or can already other people join it? Thanks, uh, Dirk, for, the, for this uh, question. And uh, so first, uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, depending where where anybody is, is located. Uh, so the Iploca has uh, launched their new website. It was only, uh, I think, a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, most, most of the information that are, uh, are accessible to non-members I mean, uh, for example, the shared uh, experience platform where uh, any uh, contractor being either a member or non-member can uh, submit or communicate, uh, for example, lessons learned or safety alert, etc. And those will be eventually categorized, you know, per uh, themes, chapters, uh, being either uh, construction or uh, more managerial, etc. So all this is accessible to non-members. Uh, if you are a, a member, what you can have uh, as a benefit to this is you can get some notification system, meaning if you want to set particular uh, parameters in order to be uh, informed on such and such uh, uh, themes, uh, this can be done uh, as a member. OK. Um, thank, thank you for, for answering this question. So um, this is this, this platform which uh, gives you a big chance um, to, to create a lot of, um, of, of, of influencing um, information and new activities. Are you tracking this, this access to your platform? Can you see if your members are constantly looking on the platform or if this is increasing or if after a couple of while nobody is more interesting interested in um, what are the, um, the, the experience you can give us here so the the, the platform uh, uh, has been uh, existing now for uh, for a few years i think we are close to if not uh, above 300 uh, documents now uh, that are published on a, on a regular uh, regular basis, and uh, so we, we have. Uh, so I have to see exactly how it is with the new uh, the new website, but we, we have a tool in order to track, uh, as you are saying, uh, uh, the quantity or uh, you know statistics of uh, uh, of connection uh, onto the platform to see uh, what is the trend. 
So uh, I have to see with uh, uh, with the Secretariat of Iploca with this uh, new uh, website uh, how we are going to to retrieve and see if we can have the same kind of uh, of level of uh, of scrutiny on the activity of the platform as uh, as we had uh, as we had before. But uh, yes, the, the intent is to is to, is to be able to track and to make sure that uh, we can have uh, uh, more and more documents uh, shared on the platform uh, uh, by uh, contacting our, uh, our members uh, through our uh, different committees, uh, our different initiatives uh, during mm -hmm. the annual convention, uh, etc. Okay, thanks Bruno. Another question raised up because he was mentioning the benchmarking in your in your speech. Is this uh, benchmarking also related to cost and productivity? Um, and if somebody else could get information for this, but the last part of the question you answered already. But for the first, it is also commercial issues mentioned there? Uh, if I remember the slide where it is mentioned benchmarking, I think it was in the HSC statistic report. So uh, no, it is not related at all to any uh, pricing or productivity or commercial information. Uh, the benchmarking I have indicated is, in fact, as you have in this report, I mean the aggregate of information from all the members, in fact, you can compare, benchmark, benchmark uh, your, your, yourself, I mean your own safety performance, to see what is your trend and uh, how effective your own systems are compared to what's happening nowadays in, uh, in the industry. So uh, the benchmarking indicating in the slide is only related to the HSC uh, statistics uh, data. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, well, I was thinking about this. Thanks, thanks for this. The let us make a small move to, to Thomas uh, about uh, his nice um, developments in, in the devices here are using or much strikers using um, and Thomas, how you are able to motivate your your employees your workers on site uh, to, to work together uh, to share their experience and their ideas with the management so that you are able to to put all this uh, these things in, um, in in a in a positive in a policy way in your construction how you can gain these quick wins what you are doing you have a kind of contests with within your company so Dirk, thanks for your question and uh, also from my side a, a warm welcome and uh, also a big thanks for, for the organizers of, of this conference. I think this is a very unusual format still and hope it will uh, change next year. Um, but the way it works is, is phenomenal. Um, regarding your question, so um, we have Max Streicher. Um, try to improve our safety within two folds. First of all, this is the constant training um, we um, deliver to our people. Um, we have, for instance, yearly meetings every uh, where we talk on two days in a row with almost every employee of, of Streicher in a place. Of course, not this year, but normally this is a, this year also done virtually uh, about uh, safety and how to improve safety, about lessons learned. Um, second of all, uh, we try to have a, a quite open culture and, and feedback culture so that you have a constant feedback between the management and uh, the employees um, where the, the management is, is acting first of all as a role model and uh, secondly, um, they are taking the concerns and ideas of the uh, employees very serious. So I think it's, it's very motivating. Um, towards the employees if they see that the ideas they have and they have developed are taken serious and then developed and you can see the result by let's say a new device for instance which is being built or a small uh, a small thing which makes a big improvement so at the end they are very proud of their own ideas i think this is a good, a good way to involve them yes to put them together there arise another question direct um, concerning to your um, HDD, uh, uh, Rick, um, the question is, is this really completely without hydraulic oil? Um, because somebody can see a crane and was asking if it's run with water hydraulics or something like this. So can you answer this question as well? So the, um, maybe he mismatched it with the pay welder. So the, the pay welder has a crane, which is still uh, hydraulically driven. Um, the trick at the pay welder is that we use 
the generator which is normally used for welding um, to drive the, the caterpillar so that you don't need a second engine. Um, the HDD rig itself, it's uh, fully electrical driven. Mm -hmm. So no hydraulic oil can can uh, come in the in the environment and and, and make there some bad consequences. I think this is a really 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 good good idea and um, it's yeah all the all the tools you are uh, showing are, are helping our industry, especially when we are talking about the welding machines, the welding rig, which are uh, running with uh, with uh, electric energy. So we are you not we you are reducing. Um, CO emissions and uh, this is a, a small step but a good step for the future. Thanks for for this um, information, Thomas. Are some other ideas already in your in your pipeline? Some ideas which are currently hidden but will come up in the next next weeks. So there are let's say a few evolutionary things uh, which are let's say what we are thinking of. Uh, first of all, you can. Um, connect um, the pay welder as well as the HDD di uh, directly to the power grid so you don't need uh, a power generator. Um, what we're thinking of is um, to also to implement a fuel cell um, to run uh, these machines with hydrogen so that you can improve significantly your, your env environmental footprint. And uh, last but not least, because um, the way these machines are constructed are uh, like a platform. So it's very similar, for instance, to a VW, where you have, can have a Golf or a, a Touran or something. So uh, with this setup, it's very easy to change um, these uh, or to develop new appliances. For instance, um, to have a caterpillar driven um, device which is bringing the pipes um, to the right of way or to bring uh, people to the um, to the site um, by using these caterpillar drives. Mm -hmm. Thanks Thomas. Platform um, bases are always good. I hope you're not jumping in the car industry with your with your platforms or the truck industry. But, but many thanks and, and good luck and uh, a lot of success with this new developments. Coming to, coming to Ashok, who was talking about the new systems of open grid, which they are using to detect uh, attacks. Um, um, Ashok, how many incidents you detected in Germany since the implementation? Can you give us a rough figure so that we have a feeling uh, what, what is behind? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for this very interesting question, Dirk. And um, also from my side, a warm welcome to, to the colleagues. Um, which I cannot see, but I hopefully they can see and hear me. Um, well, um, let me let me start like this. I mean, um, this this the system has has a long history in development, and um, we in the last couple of three years we were we were validating the system in in, in detail and in depth, and right now we we installed this recently uh, on our pipelines Z-Link, um, which is around 200 kilometers long and um, a pipeline uh, in, in, in the region of Bavaria. And to your question, um, we detected luckily no damages <laughs> by, by excavators. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing because uh, during our validation test, we could detect um, uh, any kind of, of um, simulated damages uh, on the pipelines. And um, from the sum of um, we um, detected, I mean, we, detect, we did not detect any, any, any uh, excavator damages. Um, and this lies more in the, um, in the number of pipelines we are protecting right now. It's just two pipeline systems. So if we might increase the number, I think I have a, roughly a number from, from, from Germany of around 10 excavator damages per year. So I'm, I'm very much eager that we can detect all this 10. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is quite interesting, but at the other hand, it's also important to know that nothing happened on the pipeline. So um, this is, uh, make it make it very safe and uh, also for the operator who, who didn't see there any reactions. And later on, if you have an inline inspection, you can say, okay, this happened not during the construction, not during the operations, this must be brand new. So this could be uh, anyway, anyway helpful, I assume. Absolutely. Um, this is this is right, Ashok. How many? Um, if you are talking in your in your presentation about the distance between the markers or the poles, uh, what is the minimum distance you you uh, you you need to make your system um, running? I mean, I can um, tell you that in the um, compared to the live examples we have. I mean, on the on the two hundred kilometers pipeline. Um, we, we have roughly around uh, f uh, in a distance of uh, 5 to 15 kilometers the system okay. installed so and if you want to have it um, more localized detections you can also decrease the number but in our opinion this this distance is f fairly enough to 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 um, decrease the num uh, the the area of of this excavator damage for example so um, that 5 to 15 kilometers are absolutely enough um i mean there are also i mean the i mean there's there's no limit actually i mean it depends really on the location where you where you install it so if you have a lot of pipelines crossing on a 200 kilometers pipeline every let's say every 10 kilometers I think it's advisable to 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 uh, install the system directly in the location where you have these crossings. But if you have a pipeline just with one crossing or very small parallel um, uh, line pipeline, then it is uh, advisable to install it there. So actually, there's no limit of the of the distance where you, where you install it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for this. Another question raised up, but um, let me first think about another another idea, which I can imagine a lot of uh, our um, audience uh, will raise. Can you detect also illegal hot tapping trials with your with your system? Because this was a big uh, discussion uh, before our session started. Uh, pipeline theft or illegal hot tapping is a big issue worldwide. Do you think it's helpful? Can can your system help us there? Yeah, I mean, um, we, we had really this thought also um, if we can develop this system towards towards this illegal tapping, and in this um, R and D project, uh, what I what I showed you, and um, with our with our pipeline operator together, we also tested the system in that direction, and um, it is indeed possible to detect it because you have a very low resistance contact to that pipeline. But in um, our opinion, it is better to install this in. Um, I mean, to to because uh, let me say it like this: an excavator you can directly detect from a helicopter or some some system or from a human. It is directly uh, obvious that there is something big on your on your pipeline. But if you want to detect a human, so on on illegal tapping. Then it's better to install it in a one to two kilometers of distances, especially there where you think um, it it might be undetected, this illegal tapping. So it is possible, Dirk. Okay, you have only to decrease um, the poles. And another question raised up: um, if the quality of the coating is influencing uh, your 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 system. Yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> so how does the system work? Um, you have. Um, you are you are registering the current flow of this of the CCP system, and um, I I wish I could show this, but the, the, a pipeline uh, where is a CP installed is an absolutely lively system. So you have a lot of noises which you which you get from from outside and also from the pipeline itself. And um, if the the better the coating is, the easier it is to to. Um, to um, install install pipe pipe one plus, but we have also coatings um, which have naturally from made of bitumen bitumen bituminous materials which which have a lot of defects inside. Yes. There you get a lot more noises, and there we have to yeah we have a, right now this algorithm running, 
there this algorithm has to be taught to check also damages on this kind of pipelines. Right now, we would suggest more to the newly built pipelines with very good coatings, uh, um, uh, like like a three-layer polyethylene, or um, um, or, or to the pipelines which which are from the from the 80s. So, so if you have a pipeline made of bituminous materials, which are which which perform a lot of which have a lot of cracks inside, then I would I would say um, it's 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 not ready for that system. Okay, thank you. I could really understand because I know my old pipeline was also bitumen coated and with a lot of defects at the end in the coating, create some problems with this, for the CP measurement. Um, yeah, gentlemen, if I look to our uh, to our chat room and uh, also to my notes, there are no other uh, questions uh, raising up uh, currently. Maybe maybe later on, uh, but at the moment nothing. So. Um, I have to thank you, thank you a lot to to my three speakers and to your presentations, and I was very happy for for sharing your experience and your knowledge uh, with us. It's it's wonderful, but more happy I would be to see all of you face to face next year in PTC, hopefully in Berlin, maybe. Um, Dennis and Marian will tell us something about the next year's expectation from their point of view. And uh, thank you to all of you, to the audience, to listen to our nice, uh, nice session. And I wish you a, a very uh, interesting afternoon and later on with the sessions. And we'll see you uh, on Thursday noon for the finalizing of the conference. Bye bye, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.